What if I told you that in just seven days, you can start earning a passive income stream of over a thousand dollars a month? Hashtag be your own boss, hashtag entrepreneur, hashtag building a business. Who wants to make some money from a great business opportunity? Today's video is all about the FTC sending 10 different MLM companies a little bit of a serious letter indicating that their distributors are doing something that is off limits. Distributors for some of these MLM companies have been making claims that do not fit within the FTC Act and are not playing by the rules of proper marketing etiquette. Here's the list of the companies receiving the letters. Many alluded to a quick income stream or alluded to some wealth or that you can invest in a product that helps build up immunity against this worldwide virus. Why is this a problem? Shouldn't people be able to do whatever they want or say whatever they want on their social media accounts? Certainly all the people in network marketing are making a lot of money, right? All their hashtags indicate that they're, they're making a killing as an entrepreneur. Do you think they're truly offering a once in a lifetime opportunity? The FTC has sent warning letters to MLM companies already regarding their distributors making claims that their products can help you against the virus but this is the first one where they indicate that there's some unsubstantiated wealth claims what the FTC really cares about is substantiated wealth claims if most consumers a high majority or if just the average consumer is making what is being marketed then that is fine that is substantiated because there's proof what they really don't like is unsubstantiated wealth claims and what we'll find today in this video is that there is a lot of unsubstantiation going on with the pitching of these MLM business opportunities. The FTC is all about the consumer. They are there to help protect you because they know how powerful the marketing and sales can be to the human psychology. And what's really tricky about MLMs is it's essentially people that know each other. There's a level of inherent trust built up because you already have a prior relationship or friendship. So of course you're thinking these people are looking out for your best interests, which they totally might be. You have plenty of people that are buying these MLM products that love the product and fully believe in them. They hype them up to the moon because they really believe that they could work for you. There's nothing wrong with that. There becomes a problem though, when you make all these claims about making so much money and all of these products can help save you from this virus. And so that's when the FTC jumps in and says, hold on, not so fast, my friend. The letters sent to these MLM companies notified them that they had 48 hours to respond to the FTC to address the specific actions they have taken regarding these claims. I'd really like to see what some of these business leaders do atop these MLM companies. They have so many distributors underneath them that I think act as 1099 employees. They're, they aren't like employees, but independent contractors. But it would be interesting to see if they were to get up and make like a company-wide claim of this is what's acceptable and this is what's not acceptable on social media. I think if MLM members had to use actual factual claims about the reality of becoming a member or distributor of the MLMs, I think you would see the recruitment dry up really quickly. I don't think this is something that should shut a an MLM company down, but I think it should lead to some fines. That would stop the behavior really quickly. But maybe these distributors are making a lot of money, all these claims of you know quick passive income, so maybe they could easily pay the fine. But what if I told you they couldn't? Let's do a little digging into MLMs to see what kind of opportunity is actually being presented. In a minute, I'm gonna share with you some data on what kind of profit distributors of MLMs make. But first, we're gonna answer the biggest question for MLMs. Are they pyramid schemes? A pyramid scheme is one in which profits come from the recruitment of new members. The investment capital paid to enter into the pyramid pays off the previous layer's profit, and the new member's profit comes from recruiting new members. How does this differ from MLMs? Well. MLMs make their money from direct selling. Distributors get sold on the opportunity to start working from home, becoming an entrepreneur, or being your own boss. They buy inventory of the product and make money from selling that product. This is perfectly ethical and legal. The reason why MLMs get labeled as legal pyramid schemes is because the only real way to make money in MLMs is to recruit people to your downline, AKA the people underneath you, and let them begin selling the product. You're just one person, think about it, if you can recruit multiple people underneath you. If you have 10 people underneath you, then you've got 10 people selling the product and you get commission off of all of them selling. So instead of just having one person, now you have up to maybe 11. But it's still legal because the profit comes from the direct selling, not from the recruitment only. Even though we all know that the real way to make money in these MLMs is to recruit as many people as possible. What MLMs should be referred as is endless chain schemes because the business model still relies on there being an endless amount of people joining the pyramid. What ultimately ends in a legal pyramid scheme is the finality of any new members being recruited into the scheme. Because with no new money entering into the period, the previous layer can't get paid their profit. With MLMs, if no new members are recruited, then the bottom layer is left holding the bag 
which sounds eerily similar to an illegal pyramid scheme, but it's not an illegal pyramid scheme. Oh, how confusing this all is. Some data I found indicates that around 90% of members in an illegal pyramid scheme lose money. So around 10% of the people profit, 10%. According to this document found on northwestern.edu titled Facts on MLM Companies written in July 2012 by Ann Coughlin, MLM distributors generated $28.87 billion in the US in 2011. 28 0.87 billion dollars in revenue. What an opportunity for people to become their own business owners. There were only 15.6 million direct selling distributors, so there must have been a large profit on average for these be your own bosses. Well, if you bring out your simple calculator, then you'll see that the average revenue for each distributor is $1,914 for the year. That averages to $5.25 every day. That's not much of a living, but what if the numbers are actually much worse? The best source I found on the profitability of these lucrative business opportunities is an article published on the ftc.gov website titled The Case For and Against Multi-Level Marketing, written in 2011 by John M. Taylor. If you just wanna know how many people lose money with MLMs, it's over 99% lose money. Over half of all payout money goes to the top of the pyramid promoters, what he alludes to as top. This is basically a game where the top of the food chain gets paid really well and everyone else loses money. Full credit goes to the author of this article. I'm gonna read some very staggering data about MLMs. If you enjoy the truth and exposing of MLMs, this next part will be very rewarding for you. Our studies, along with those done by other independent analysts, clearly prove that MLM as a business model with its endless chain of recruitment of participants as primary customers is flawed, unfair, and deceptive. Worldwide feedback suggests it is also extremely viral, predatory, and harmful to many participants. Of the 350 MLMs I have analyzed for which a complete compensation plan was available, 100% of them are recruitment-driven and top-weighted. In other words, the vast majority of commissions paid by MLM companies go to a tiny percentage of tops at the expense of a revolving door of recruits, 99% of whom lose money. This is after subtracting purchases they must make to qualify for commissions and advancement in the scheme, to say nothing of minimal operating expenses for conducting an aggressive recruitment campaign, which is essential to get into the profit column. This next segment is interesting. He details how in Wisconsin in 1980, there was an investigation where they looked at 20,000 distributors up in Wisconsin, and basically state tax returns came back for about 200 of them, which represented approximately the top 1% of distributors in Wisconsin. Uh, there was some gross profit of about 12,500. And if you looked at the net income after subtracting operating expenses for these 200 top Amway distributors, it was about minus $900, which means even the people at the top were losing money. Down here, he details you know two distributors who operated profitably out of 20,000, so basically one in 10,000. Certainly not the numbers that they share. Um, this part is really interesting. He basically details why disclosure of information supporting income claims is incredibly important. This is one of the big reasons why I made the Authentic or Charlatan series is because I want to promote transparency. Transparency so all consumers know the details and know what they're signing up for. And he's basically claiming that, you know, since the income claims of MLMs touted by the promoters are at the heart of the le legitimacy of the programs, it is important to disclose the truth about average earnings. But the reason why the MLM industry is vis vigorously resisting this is be simple, because they have something to hide. They don't want people to know that nearly everyone loses money. The author was a distributor for New Skin for a year. He spent roughly like $18,000 on expenses to get up and going. He mentions that you probably need to spend at least that to begin getting sales and have an aggressive marketing campaign. But what he likes about Newskin is they release some of the data and it is really important to see. You can see the top data values as the uh, active distributors not earning a check. 86% of the active distributors were not even earning commission. But what I want you to check out is the bottom row, which is the blue diamonds. This is the top dogs in the whole organization. 54% of the payout went to the top dogs. This is how these MLMs work. The top dogs earn the lion's share of commission, and down at the bottom you earn very little. Here the author details that a better number would be to actually remove the blue diamond commission structure to see the average payout for everyone else. And he comes to the conclusion that it would be minus $559.66 per distributor and it's a far greater loss if you subtract operating expenses. Throughout the rest of the article, the author provides plenty of data and pretty good insight into the numbers that these companies operate. It is fascinating to read as he indicates it is actually more profitable statistically to participate in an illegal pyramid scheme 
than to participate in an MLM, as an illegal pyramid scheme has a 90% chance at uh, failing and losing money, but a MLM scheme essentially has a 100% chance. He goes over how many distributors there are in the world, and by rounding up the numbers, you can essentially hit 100% guarantee that you will lose money in the long run through an L, uh, MLM. Now, of course, there's a few people that reach the top and see huge numbers of income, but those are the outliers. Almost everyone else loses money. I would highly recommend checking out this article if you have a chance and you're fascinated by this data.